Hey, Composer Gloves here. This is the second video in Sounds Like, and today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. I'm also going to explain the creation behind it, and we're going to make it. So, I started off with some drum loops, and I wanted to make a bass sound. And I was like, great, I got my drums, and now I need to make the bass. So, as I was thinking about this, there's a whole bunch of different types of basses. You have your rhythmic basses, your LFO-based basses, which are sort of rhythmic. You, um, Well, rhythmic's more about how you write it. When I say rhythmic, I think, I think performer uh, tabs. And then you have your timbral basses, basses that change in texture, and you chop them up so that they fit in your song rhythmically. And there's just all, all these different types of basses out there. And I knew I wanted to do an LFO-based bass. And so what I came up was uh, with two patches. I created my uh, patch partway, and I liked what I had, so I cloned it, and I kept going, and I made it more, I added more things to it. So you'll see the oscillators. There's all three oscillators kicking on this one. There's only one on this one. So uh, I'll play for you what I have. <laughs> So, I mean, there's obviously there's only three things going on. So I think that's actually pretty, pretty active for three things. And I mean, given the drum loop has a whole bunch of instruments in it, but I see room for chords, pads, stabs, and some more interesting rhythmic lines, but uh, overall a pretty interesting bass to have in a track. So let's go ahead and make it. So I have a massive right here that is untouched. Now, quick note about workflow. I use FL Studios. In FL Studios, you can use your typing keyboard as a controller. Uh, right now, I have my keyboard hooked up, my MIDI controller, my MIDI keyboard, like the actual piano keyboard. But when I was working on this patch, I was using my MIDI keyboard. Now, the thing about using third-party plugins in FL Studios is when you open them, you can play them with your key key keyboard your typing keyboard but as soon as you move something no go you can't do it i can push all the notes i want so now my midi controller will still work which is why i use that sometimes so as a result sometimes my workflow changes because i'll have to go into the piano roll i have to make a new pattern i'll go into the piano roll and i'll put a note down and i just play that note and while I'm playing this note, I keep in mind that this is going to be a rhythm at some point, but I'm also looking for the texture, the timbre of what I'm playing. So I'm going to spare you the listening to a sort of drone go on and let's start making the patch. So I had oscillator one. I went down and I was like, Hey, what am I going to do? And I went to Sonic. I said, Sonic, you know, it's pretty cool. I messed around with a few different ones, but I picked Sonic. The reason I liked it so much was because it's already so low, but there's still like that upper end overtone going on. So I pitched it down because basses are low. That was my thinking. Now I had this. I was like super duper. And I decided since I wanted to use an LFO and I wanted to be aggressive, I'll use a saw wave and I'll put it on my amp. And I literally just turned it on like that. And that was that. Now I had or, and I also realized I need to sync it because I want it to fit my track. So I put it at a tempo, a sync in. And I had that and I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. How can I make it, you know, more aggressive? So I went down to my modulating oscillator and I said, oh, phase modulation, that'll do it. So I went to my phase and I, I, I turned it down because I, I already knew that phase was going to affect it a lot. And then I started messing with the pitch while I was playing because I, I was thinking, you know, what about the pitch? So. And that one lined up quite nicely. So I picked seven. That's how I got to seven. If I move the phase up. Uh, I like that. 
And that's a sound I can make louder and stronger and distort heavier and still maintain some sort of a texture. But if you turn the phase up just to things I didn't like, you might like them. If you notice on my, my patch up here, oh, I turned it off. Oh, but I left it on on this one. I turned on FM filter, but I never bothered turning the FM filter actually on when I was working on it. As a result, I deemed that it did nothing, but it did do something. I just never turned it on. So it's just one of those things when you're working, you just overlook some details. So I didn't use filter FM. Uh, I thought it was on on this one, but I turned it off apparently, but it's still on on this one. And sometimes you do things like that. If you'll notice, it's not on. So just so you know, I, that is as far as I went with the modulating oscillator. Then I decided to try and use resonance. So I turned my low pass on. I picked one of these. We're going to go with two this time. And I turned all the way on. And so I left it like that. And the resonance I messed with. And I liked it right about there. And I put the same filter on it. And that's what I had at that point. I said, hey, I like that. It sounds cool. I'm all about that life. So by this point, I was messing with tube distortion. I said, yeah, but now I have this weird flappy thing going on. And as a result of the way this saw is behaving, and I didn't like that. So I went to my sine wave and I like that. But when I push the beginning of the note, I still get that weird bah, wah, wah, wah. So I changed the phase to start at the top. And I like that one the best. It did most of what I wanted. And then I went over here and I added, oops, sorry. I added some reverb, shockingly, just a very, very tiny amount. I actually left all the settings alone, I believe. Just barely turned it on to give it some depth. And by this time, we're starting to get that bass sound that this guy sounds like. Not quite, though. So I said, gee, what other kind of tube distortion can I use? Because I didn't like ramping this one up all the way. So I knew that the parabolic shaper and the sine shaper did essentially the same thing. If you've made it this far in the video and you still haven't watched my uh, Master from the Ground Up and you're kind of lost, go really quick watch that series. Uh, it will make it so that you're not lost anymore. So... I just started messing with the dry wet and the drives. I believe I turned sine shaper all the way on. No, parabolic shaper. But I didn't use it a whole lot. So let's mess with that. And I really like that. Now you hear that kind of you heard that noisy thing come in on the upper end when I drove it too hard. I didn't want that, but I still lack high end and I wanted high end. So I came over here to my EQ. And also you'll notice when you use this many distortion units, you really have a lot of control over kind of the texture, the timbre your sound takes on. So I wanted high end and I ended up boosting, I think everything, which isn't exactly the best idea for a mix, but that's what I did. And I dug that high end. I like that one way more. So I was like, all right, this is awesome. I think I even pushed it harder. I'm pretty happy with that. And by this time, we pretty much have the same sound. Now I cloned it at this point. And so this one would be this one. And the clone would be this one. And what I did, so I went to this one and I seriously made like one change. As you can see, everything is essentially the same. And all I did was, first I'm going to turn that off. I took the pitch and I turned it down negative seven. And I wound up with this. So if we take this down to negative seven, you'd be surprised. Yeah, so that's how I got that sound. So we've reached that sound. And I said, wow, that is a usable bass. I can use that. So I, then I went on with my not cloned one and I continued to make adjustments to try and make a second bass that could like be um, sort of its bud in the song and say, hey, I'm here when you're not playing. 
So I added a second oscillator and I went to the wavetable known as acid. And it sounds like this. Which, uh, you know, you might want that, but I put the LFO on because that it is important. So. I ended up doing that. And as you can see, the direction this, when I, I didn't finish my sentence from before. It is important what way you send this green line because it determines which way the signal is going to turn on. So this LFO is turning it on like this, on and off. If I went the other way, it would be turning it off to on because this starts at the peak phase. So this would be all the way on, do, 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 do. but it would be disappearing. And I didn't want that. I still wanted that dry tone to get through. So I put it up like that. And if we play just that sound, you get that double take thing. Like, where is that double time sort of coming from? Well, it's coming from the cutoff up here. The way this cutoff is routed, if I change it the other way around, you get something totally different because it's sending the signal backwards to what we just told it. But it's going through this LFO like all crazy like. So that's what's going on there. And so... That's pretty much, I stuck with that. I like that. And now I had a, I sort of had a little pull. So you can hear it going pop, 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 pop. But it, it's not like the flap I got from this wave. You see, it's not that bad. It's more pronounced and defined. So I dug that. Also, if you, square wave's pretty cool option too. You could do all sorts of things with LFO. Because this song, this sound is based around the LFO. So... After that, I decided, hey, I could put in another thing and complement it. And I seriously just went like that and added another wave to it. But it's really loud. And I believe, yeah, I did do that. I sent it the opposite way. Because now it starts off and it turns on. So the transient, meaning a transient, I haven't defined this yet. And I probably will in a separate tutorial, but a transient is peak and a level of uh, a moment of excitement so in drums and they say it's detecting the transients it's detecting the peak the spike in the audio so uh yeah if i do it like this the transient of this square wave just comes right on through and i don't want that i was already happy with my transient so i just routed it the other way and it's gone and it reinforces this guy so if i turn these two off they kind of complement each other and see, if you're creating a sound uh, and like this particular sound, there's no way you'd start and know like, oh yeah, I want that in my sound. But when you add it with the first oscillator, it all comes together to form this wonderful sound. And now we have a really full sound and you can stick it in a track. And I changed the two LFO rates so that you just get more, just get more variation. Now, a quick note about this. Um, you'll see I chose A, but just so you know, I'm not working in A because uh, these sounds are the modulating oscillator is messing with the pitch, sort of. And as a result, I'm like almost a half step off. So this is A, but I think it would really be closer to, to C. Let's add a, another massive and discover what we're working with. So if I play a C, does that sound like the first note or an A? It sort of does. But let's go to the second one. That's the same note, the A. See, when I was working on this, I discovered this problem. And I guess it affects it more when you go down in pitch. So that's the same note. So when you're working, just be wary of that. So these notes are actually a little bit off. Like I have a B natural in there, which technically is in the scale. But it's technically playing uh, an, a B. Let me think about this. If I'm playing a B. I 
it's playing a low E. It's playing an E instead of a B. It's like that far off. It's so, it's pretty weird, man. But yeah, just keep that in mind. So I was using my ear mostly. Music theory, If now that I know what the transposition is, I could do all sorts of things with my theory knowledge. But I didn't. I was just using my ear. And that is that patch. If you enjoy these videos, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, share these videos with someone who would like to know more about Massive. And have a blessed day day.